Thanks, Doug. All right, let's turn to a lawsuit over hairstyle. A young woman sidelined from her job says that it's because the manager didn't like her hair. Specifically, she had long braids that she changed after she got the job. Well, she's lawyered up and she is suing Banana Republic for a million dollars. And of course, it begs a lot of questions whether or not an employer has a right to expect a certain style of dress, a certain hairstyle. But what about if you've got a manager that, at least according to this young woman, said some things that she took as racist, including calling her hair an urban style? All right, let's bring in a legal expert. Attorney Armin McComber joins me. Armin, welcome back to Chasing News. Good evening, Bill. How are you doing tonight? So here's the question. I'm doing great. Thank you. I, the question is this. Um, you know, the word urban is an interesting word. Does, is it really racist if you are talking about it in the context of the people that you are expecting in and out of your store? And does an employer have a right to make those judgment calls or does this kid have a right to sue? Well, I think she probably, uh, I think what happened was probably not appropriate. I think, um, you know, you're putting yourself at risk. And certainly, I'm sure Banana Republic or Gap doesn't want their managers going to African-American women and telling them that they look too urban. Uh, I think that's going to be uh, pretty much construed as a code word for too African-American or too black. Where's the legal line if you're trying to match your customer base? And again, I don't know. You talk about Westchester County. I don't know. Maybe majority of their customers are white and they want to match that. I, again, I don't know those answers, but is there a legal definition somewhere or do the employers have to be completely uh, colorblind when it comes to their staff? New York State has a, a human rights law that's very similar to New Jersey's law against discrimination, and it, it requires that uh, companies, um, you know, such as Banana Republic or Gap, that they have policies and practices that are non-discriminatory, that are facially neutral uh, on their face, that aren't going to apply to any race in particular. So it's more in the statement than it is the actual direction on how to dress. I, I, again, as, a, as an employment lawyer and as someone who does represent some companies, I would be extremely uncomfortable with a manager walking around saying something like that. Okay. Armin, thank you. Always appreciate your expertise. Good, Good talk. Good night. Thank you. Thanks. All right, let's bring in our A-plus panel to break this down. Guys, I think it's worthy of mentioning. Uh, the first point that jumps out to me is she didn't change her hair until after she got the job. And the real question is, does an employer have a right to set a certain expectation and dress code? Uh, hello, I'm happy to be nappy. My hair is very nappy, <laughs> okay? My hair is not my wardrobe. This is what I was born with. My hair is nappy, it's kinky. We have our cultural styles. They tried that with Venus and Serena, don't wear the beads. That father had to sue the, the tennis community to make sure his daughters could wear their natural cultural hair. That's absolutely wrong, and she should sue the hell out of them because so, they, they violated right. her right How, to have her know, hair. To me, it seems another frivolous lawsuit because somebody's upset. This is a kid maybe making nine or ten bucks an hour, maybe, maybe a little bit of commission suing for a million dollars for what, missing a couple of shifts? Well, seems ridiculous. according to some of the facts I know about the case is that change of hairstyle by, was told to her by a manager who made some racially mm -hmm. charged remarks saying uh, you got to look a little more Caucasian. Okay. I think he used the word Caucasian or suburban. And, you know, it's well, not he, just not, wait, wait, but story, it's not just $9 an hour. He said it looks urban. Urban is cold for black. Urban is cold for Negro. And, and, and there's is. not a question of right. a kid with minimum wage. I don't know what I do if my daughter came home and told me that someone said something based upon the way she was born. So I don't know, Bill, so let me what would you, you do? Should a, how do you compensate well, for that kind should of thing? Should a white model then, a model, let's say, you know, sales billboards have a right to sue if she doesn't get used, let's say, in certain parts of Newark? It depends on the reason why. But she why. does. Newark is full of billboards with white people's faces on it. And Bo Derek was a 10 in a movie years ago when she wore braids and beads. But when we wear braids and beads, we're suspended, i.e. fired. Come on, Bill. Really? Always race. Always oh, race. God. All right. Gotta you leave know it what there. it is, Bill. Thank you, guys. Great to see you. Thank you, Alicia. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Mike.